to get into this whole concept of credit score versus credit profile. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of thought it was all kind of one thing. Then I started talking to McCall and they're not exactly the same thing. No. So can you kind of give us uh, like what's the difference? What does that mean? So a credit score is just a new it's a numerical figure right. um, that is derived based off of um, like a certain amount of activity on your credit. For instance, I had a young lady today. Um, she had a 725 credit score. Right. She had one credit card okay. that she's had for a little over a year. Mm -hmm. And she's paid it, you know, you know, consistently and right. on time. And she has a 725. Right. Right. One credit card. Right. One, one year history. So, but her credit profile is thin because she doesn't have a length of credit history. Right. She doesn't have um, I mean, she doesn't have any other credit history outside of that 12 month period. Right. So your profile is going to consist of, um, and I'm gonna go back to that. I should have had that, that example. Mm -hmm. Right. That example that breaks it down, all the different factors that's involved in the actual profile because it is your history of credit. Right. Um, it's your, um, course your credit history how you pay your how you pay your creditors right um, and so Nicole what I think I hear you saying the difference between a credit score and a credit profile I could have a high enough credit score mm -hmm. I could be in that 700 club mm -hmm. but I could still get denied though you could still get denied now and so this the, the this conversation you know that we had came up because there is a separate level of qualifying for conventional loans. Okay. They specifically are targeting or looking at credit profiles. Okay. As far as the automated underwriting system, you can get an approval on F FHA is so much more lenient. Hmm. VA is the next second lenient. And then USDA is a little bit more particular as well. Okay. But FHA is, you know, once you get over a certain score, like a 620, you're almost guaranteed unless you had a foreclosure bankruptcy or short sale or something. Right you're going to pretty much get an automated and underwriting approval, okay. which is why it's more so we do more of that financing because it's more, um, um, it's, it, it gives you more um, leniency, more leniency, right? Okay. But, but when you're dealing with um, conventional financing, it is looking at just your credit, it's looking at your credit profile. So that young lady, I didn't try it, but right. nine times out of 10, she wouldn't have gotten a conventional approval, even with a 725. Right. And see, she wouldn't have understood that because she's like, I got a 725. Like, why, why, why wouldn't you approve me? Because, and because of the credit profile, they're, they're assessing your total risk. Right. And you, you, we don't know you. It's like, I don't know you that well. Yet. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. So the profile is going a little deeper. Yes. That's exactly what that, okay. That's exactly. So we're checking you out a little deeper. So I'm sure that surprises people. Though. It surprises people. And it's one of the hardest conversations I have to have every right. day. Right. And the reason why it's more of a conversation is because the student loans. Mm -hmm. Even though I know that's, we're talking about credit and not that. Right. But student loan payments, if you're doing a conventional loan, okay. we can count if you're on an income base, which most people are. Right. And then that affects your debt to income ratio. That affects how much you can qualify for. Right. On FHA, I have to count 1% of it. I don't care what you're paying. If you're paying $10 a month and you got $100,000 student loan, I have to count $1,000 payment against you. Oh. And that heals people's debt to income ratio, right. which, which affects how much they can qualify, qualify for. for gotcha. So then that's when you want to try to go the conventional route because right. you, know, you don't want to be shut out of being able to qualify right. for a home altogether. Right. But then you get shut down because your profile isn't strong enough. Gotcha. So it's just like wall, wall, yeah. you know. Right. So, so I want to make sure y'all have any questions about what Nicole is talking about, particularly um, from the student loan perspective, because I know that already came up. Because we want to make sure that you're able to position yourself and allow this to be your season of preparation yes. right now. Yeah. So if you got them, it's, it's not a deal breaker. It doesn't mean that you can't buy or you'll never be able to buy. But what should you be doing right now? 
So for those of us who are first time home buyers, we are looking to refinance, we're looking to upgrade, we want our second home, rental real estate, whatever you want. Like this is literally your season of preparation. So I want to make sure that you're walking away like you know exactly what to do right now. You got to know what to do. So please let's use Nicole as our subject matter expert and get these questions <laughs> answered. Do you have any questions, Ani, from folks about this whole credit profile versus credit score? It's actually pretty quiet. Yeah, it is. I see. And so for folks who are concerned about their student loans, Nicole, how do they know where they stand? Do they have to talk to somebody like you to see where they are? Or is there any way that they can kind of figure out on their own? Honestly, no. They would have to go through a link to see if their if their credit score and profile meets the requirements for conventional financing. Right. The only way to know is to run it through okay. the automated underwriting system. Okay. But is there anything else about the profile? When, when we want to make sure that everybody is here and the people who are going to watch this later if they are, if that's their goal to have this that's ideal credit right. profile, can right. you kind of give us some traits or characteristics of what that kind of looks like? And so a stronger credit history, so a longer credit history. Okay. That makes a big difference. Okay. Um, it really definitely looks at that. Of course, positive. So the most, it really um, looks at the, the most recent 24 months, not just the last six to 12, 24 months, most recent especially um if you've ever had any if, if there are any public records bank um which of course bankruptcy short sales i mean it's almost automatically even if you meet that time frame that minimal time frame right. it's gonna probably automatically shut you down without higher assets so the thing about it is if your credit score isn't strong or your profile isn't strong then the, another way to offset that is with assets because that means you're lowering your risk the more, more that Either more you put down or the more you have that even if you didn't want to put down, you have it to cover everything. Right. That definitely determines. Do you do you still have that example of that? Um, I okay, do, no, but right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> she said I can tell though. <laughs> yeah, because I can't, that young lady, she had a 680. Right. Um, had been employed, you know, had a good job for because job stability is stability. Important. Yeah, job right. stability is important. Right. Um, and she had, um, her profile though, I, it was just thinner. Okay. So thin again, meaning not probably, she, she had hadn't had it had long, long enough, enough okay. long enough credit history. Okay. Um, and then of course, utilization, the amounts that you owe on your credit cards okay. and how you, you, you keep those balances has yeah. a huge, right. um, in new credit, which still goes back to how long you've had your credit. So um, don't close your older um, credit cards. We can pay them off. We just you don't can pay them off. Them. Don't close them. And the way you keep them, the creditor from closing them is you have to use them every now and then. Mm -hmm. You have to keep them active. Okay. And then the type of credit to mix it up. You know, you want to have, you do want to have some installments, some revolving. Okay. And, and ladies, as, um, McCall just talked about those credit cards. This happened to me actually last year, and I think it was a res in response to COVID. I had a credit card that I didn't use that often, and they didn't close it, but they cut my limit in half. And so for those of you who are trying to qualify, you want to pay attention to that because that could have some impact <laughs> on the utilization, that correct? Utilization percentage. Yeah. So yeah. you want to make sure that you keep up with that. Uh, do you have any questions over there? I do. Um, Mari is back connected and she wants to answer, ask her question. Okay. Hey, Mari. Uh, hello. How are you? I just want to make sure that you all are hearing me clearly. Yes. Very good. So can you provide deeper insights to why some believe running a small balance on your credit card helps increase your credit score? Running a small balance on your credit card does. Have exactly. Score. Yeah. <laughs> so I hear that all the time. Hey, but why pay it, it off completely? But why? Did, yeah. Balance. Why is it helpful? Yeah. Because a zero balance indicates level of inactivity. Yeah. So a small balance means that you're using it. So you're, you keep in mind the, the bureaus, they're not, people they're not people it's computers and they're not it's not personal like they don't know you know mari ran her credit card last month and then she paid it to zero right. you know all they know is what the creditor reports to them so if you keep reporting zero balances 
then it's you're not you're, it's like basically you're not using it in the eyes of the bureaus okay so you need to keep some level of activity on it and then keep a small balance every yeah every now and then especially okay and Thank when you, you say a small balance as far as a percentage to your debt to ratio can you reference what is a good ideal state for that are we talking 10 percent 20 percent Mara, you can leave it as small as ten dollars I don't, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not big on paying finance charges. In right. fact, I don't do it. Right. <laughs> but, but that's just, that's, that's not, you know, I, what I'm saying, what I mean by that is if you don't, if you don't want to do that either, but I'm telling you to leave a balance, I'm not saying to leave a balance high enough that you have to pay a, a higher percentage on it. Right. So just leave something $10 just to leave it on there. But, or if you're running your credit cards, depending on what your, you, you know, your, your habits are, if you're using your credit cards every month, and as long as you're keeping that utilization really 10 to 15% below, that's going to achieve that same keeping a balance opportunity, you know, that same, um, situation basically so basically you're saying you can use that as another strategy yeah. you can either maintain a, a very small balance so you're not running up the fees or you could just keep your utilization down exactly okay by using it with what you would be using for okay right it just depends on what your limits are and what you what you run your back what balances you run every month yeah. it's a, it is a balancing act <laughs> and i just want to make sure that y'all understand what she's saying because i don't want you to walk away from this and you're like what utilization 15 <laughs> percent. i want to make sure that you know exactly what this means while we have the opportunity of going here yeah. <laughs> no, no, actually, no, thank you for that. I noticed for my um, monthly expenditures within my household, I do use a credit card to pay all of my bills. But at the end of the month, right before the billing cycle ends, I make sure I pay it off in full. Well, last month, I inherited an additional new bill that came through when my billing statement closed on the 12th, it hit on the 13th, and it was $130, but it, I saw an increase in my credit score. I was like, man, wow, I've been paying this off all, all this time. Now an extra couple, you know, a little hundred bucks. Now I'm like, it's, it's increasing. Like that was kind of odd. So just wanted to hear your perspective. Thank you for the clarity. Uh oh, but what you did is you opened up another subject. So, <laughs> <laughs> so why you got that is just what I would, well, okay. So that is a very, very common error that you're doing, what you're doing. You want to run, I, I, I do the same thing. I pay all my bills and my friends know I pay all my bills on my credit card, like a debit card and then I pay it off. But you got to wait till you get the bill, Mari. You cannot pay it off before you get the bill because like I just said, they don't know you did all that. So you're paying it off before they even report a balance to the credit bureau. So it's, look, it's like you didn't do anything that cycle. Exactly. Exactly. So but I don't do like the little pay. interest charge either. So no, no, yeah, no. You pay it off before the due date, due date right? Not before the cycle, before the due date, and then you don't get finance charges. But you've also got activity on your credit card that's reported. So it's to the showing. Yeah. So they see all that activity. You're just making your payment prior to the due date, yeah. and now you don't have to maintain a balance at all. But that's because it's on, already reported. But that's the utilization that you're talking exactly. about. Gotcha. Okay. But that's the game too. That's the credit game. So if you use it every month like that, you like you saw that increase, you're going to continue to see it increase even more. Right. Because what you're doing every month is you're saying, "Hey, I charged five hundred dollars, but then the next month, I mean, you then you pay it off." Then you charge it again, but you, but once again, you still have to make sure you keep that, whatever that running balance within 10 to 15%, preferably of whatever your credit limit is. It's such a, it's such no, a, it's such I understand, a game. I want to make sure that they understand, uh -huh, I I do too. Know, particularly yeah. for those of you who want to buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to make sure that y'all got it. Andy, do we have any questions from folks hey, before we wrap up? Hey, you all. Hey. hey. Can, you, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I remember earlier you all were talking about um, a person being able to or not being able to use current rental income towards a purchase. And I couldn't catch if you were saying if it was towards a, um, if they're buying a primary residence or if they were trying to buy commercial. Um, that was for, that? Invest, for an investment property. 
Okay, so if you're buying, um, if you're investing, then you would not be able to use any rental income. Like no, actually, a, actually, if you're buying an investment property, we can use whatever the projected rental income for that property that you're purchasing to offset your mortgage payment, the new mortgage uh, payment for the home you're purchasing. Does that make sense? It does. So if you're buying a primary residence for yourself, then no, you could no, not. No. I got it. No. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know that, that it, it made a difference. So I'm glad Amen. I'm on this call to know that. <laughs> Thank We're glad you. you're here. I'm not sure if I actually missed this, but back to providing insight for those who are looking to pay off for debt and they're taking ownership of that debt. Should they negotiate that debt with the creditor or should they pay and settle in full? Can you give more context into that? Um, being that creditors do sell off debts and they aren't paying the full amount of what you're looking to step in and pay as far as like what you believe you owe prior. Can you just kind of talk to the audience about this just a little bit? Mark, is this for someone who wants to buy a house or? Yeah, if they have a, if they have a derogatory um, inquiry on their credit report, okay. they're looking to go buy a home. Okay. Say it's a medical bill, 2018. Okay, it's on there. You weren't able to pay in 2018, you owe $540. Right. If you're looking to buy a home in 2021, are you go, should they pay that $520 or should they negotiate with the creditor itself by saying, hey, I can't pay that 520, I can offer you 350 or should they go full in and try to get it off their credit report or should they just dispute it? You should just leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> because- None of the above. None of the above, actually, right. Just because what I was saying earlier is we don't count medical bills against you as far as um, we don't count a percentage of it against you. Uh, and if it's 2018, it's already done its damage. So just let it be for the purposes of buying a home. Now, if you just want to, like you said, take ownership and pay it off and do all that, my advice is you can do that, but do it after you've closed and always try to settle on any type Absolutely. of collection debt. Yeah. Never want to pay full. Yeah. Full always settle and make sure that they agree to the terms in writing, in writing. before yes. you send them a dime. That's yeah. right. In writing for sure. Yeah. They're all shysters. <laughs> she said they're all shysters. Thank y'all for um, responding to our polling questions. We appreciate that. So as we wrap up, and Nicole, Thank you for being so generous with your time oh, and thank y'all for hanging in there with us and engaging with us. Uh, <laughs> it really was fun. Yeah, y'all let Nicole have some fun. <laughs> Want to make sure if you have any additional questions, um, please make sure that you reach out and to communicate with us. So Nicole, if people want to get connected with you, they're like, oh, shoot, I think I'm ready to buy. <laughs> how can yeah. they how can they reach out to you? They can reach out to me via email. You can go through msutta at banksouth.com. So it's sure. your last name. It's S-U-D-D-U-T-H. And the first initial is M. So it's M Sutta at banksouth.com. Okay. Um, and I'm sure y'all can send something. I'm, I'm one of the thank you. Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. Later. So yeah, if you all with, are within the Thank Me Later community through Mighty Networks, mm -hmm. you all can actually communicate with each other as well, yeah. which is yeah. really dope. So yeah. make sure that you take advantage of that. Yeah. So again, if you have not signed up for our Thank Me Later True Few community through Mighty Networks, please take a minute to do that. And um, we appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for being patient. We had some technical difficulties today, but thank y'all for being patient with us. I hope this was helpful. I hope y'all learned a lot. And also within the um, Thank Me Later community, we want to know what other topics or things we need to cover. So just like we got the recommendation about handling business credit versus personal credit, we will absolutely cover that and we will share that within the Thank Me Later community. But we want to know what other, what other topics we need to cover for y'all. So thank y'all for that. Have an amazing Wednesday night. We appreciate you and um, take care y'all.